When you're on the exchange, you're not using Bitcoin. When you're not self-custodying, you're not using Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Because that's just a table on somebody's computer. There is no such thing as a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not what matters. Bitcoin is your vehicle for you to provide for yourself what matters. A whole coin should be called a Satoshi. Colombians are still oppressed because we are oppressed by corruption and we are oppressed by physical threat. And uh, it's a society where the um, criminals have the advantage I really liked Bitcoin for was the idea that nobody could mine your financial data anymore. But the problem is that it, this is only relatively true and the more that you trust third parties in Bitcoin, the less true it is. Around the world, there is many people who are in disagreement with their government and are not able to take action or to take a stand because the government has too many tools to oppress them. Hi, Danny. How are you doing? Everything fine? Are you on? Yes, I'm very excited to be here. It's been, uh, this is my second day though, because I was at the um, dev day yesterday. Oh. So it's been really fun. How was it, the dev day? Was there something interesting that stood out to you? Well, I was particularly excited because Ben Ark was there and I like tinkering with gadgets. And so we built this thing where, like, he built Ellen Bits. And using that, we have a small hardware device, which is a switch, and then we connected a light to it, and you configure the switch to the Wi-Fi, mm. and so we were able to turn on the light uh, by making a payment on Lightning. Nice. Yeah, that I was love fun. It. I love it so much. <laughs> are, are, you, are you in technical stuff in, in Bitcoin, or are you more like on the fundamental stuff, on the economic stuff? No, I don't know econ economics i think that that's one of the areas that i wish i understood better because my dad started economics and so uh, <laughs> i've always been given a hard time about that my whole life <laughs> but no so i'm mo more technical i went to school for computer science so um i love that um side of the business it's what i enjoy the most i'm not really a very good business person I'm more of a technical person mm. and um, yeah, I really enjoy building things. I think it's my favorite part. Uh, so hopefully one day I can do kind of like what Mar Ben Ark does because that's um, what I have the most fun doing. So you want to build on top of Bitcoin? Yeah, like IoT devices, but on Bitcoin. I love it a lot. You are doing... Uh, uh Right now, the podcast with Heartbeat. Yes. Yeah. I just started a podcast. Um, and, well, the podcast is called Bitcoinando because I'm branching out on my own. Mm. I love George. And honestly, I'm really grateful for George. If I hadn't worked with him, I wouldn't have had the courage to kind of step out of my uh my rules I, I used to have very stri strict rules about social media and was very adamant about being a ghost oh. but um i don't know i don't know why i decided to step out of that that rule set and i started doing this podcast and the podcast is mostly technical although we did take like um like a little side side road Where, where I was doing a lot of interviews, but I do want to focus mostly on teaching people how to be self-sovereign and specifically for low, no budget. Because like right now, I think a lot of people believe that if you don't buy the like $250 full note and if you don't buy the, the $200 hardware wallet, then you, then you can't Bitcoin. And I mean, I know you can do it in the wallets for free and all that, but like you can you can run a node for no money. You just need a hard drive and some mm. reliable Internet and you can use um, open source technology to do the wallet portion of it. So you don't really need to spend one cent in order to get onboarded onto Bitcoin. So. That's really my, my love is going to be in that micro sector, but I, I am going to do um, tutorials of all the regular devices because I do enjoy tinkering. So I'm still going to do like 
tutorials with the mainstream devices and the ones that you buy for money and that work in America and work in Europe. But, but I'm always thinking about the people in South America and how they can participate of the Bitcoin economy. So that's why I kind of trend that in that direction. <laughs> you, you are also from there, right? Yes, I'm Colombian. Oh, amazing. Uh, so I understood it right that you are now on your own, not with Heartbeat, or mm -hmm. is Heartbeat the, the thing? Mm -mm. So on your own, nice. Mm -hmm. I don't even knew that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it just happened like so recently that I kind of, uh, yeah, I forgot to brought it, bring it up, but... I love it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's better to be on my own because... Mm. Uh, being part of a team that is involved with marketing puts pressure on me to do certain things. And honestly, when, you want to know one of the really strong reasons was because I kept on having this feeling that I wanted to say on my podcast that I didn't get paid to promote any of those products because that was that's the truth. And that I picked the products because I think that they are uh, technologically uh, sound and and a good thing to to share with other people. So... Uh, it was kind of stressful that being in that situation was holding me back because ultimately that's a marketing company and they do receive money to promote products only that because I was just in a branch like it was true for me that I wasn't receiving money to promote products but because I was a branch of the company it wasn't totally understood by the audience so I have to be on my own so that so that I can have more freedom to to have developers and other people trust that I have very neutral intentions and a neutral point of view. Mm, I love yeah. it. I love that you're on your own. Uh, I always think that's that's a great choice. I also like I do my podcast all by myself. Mm -hmm. Like I do every day a podcast and I do it all by myself. All the podcast uh, po uh, post production uh, preparation mm -hmm. everything. And it's a lot of work, yeah. but I love the control. Like yeah. When I want to have a specific segment of the podcast featured in the trailer, there's no second opinion on that. Mm -hmm. It's just me. And, and I love that uh, autonomy. I love that control and ownership about that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to what you can do. And uh, it, it might trigger something really great. And that uh, I feel like when, when you take away constraints, mm -hmm you really get the full potential all of the sudden what you can do and mm -hmm. I, I love to see that and we talked a little bit before before we started mm -hmm. the podcast um, what are your uh, great Bitcoin topics and what are your things you want to talk about and I had one thing and there's it's I had another guest on that said there is no such a thing as a Satoshi mm -hmm. and you said now there's no such thing as a Bitcoin what do you mean by that? Well, what I said earlier was there's no such thing as a Bitcoiner. But what you just said is also true. There is no such thing as a Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, uh, on the network, we all, all the denominations are in Satoshis. So really, every time you transact Bitcoin, like Bitcoin doesn't exist. Every time you transact, you're actually transacting in Satoshis. Mm. And at some point, the price of Bitcoin is going to get so high that we're not even going to talk about Bitcoins anymore. So I don't know if we made a mistake with the naming conventions. Maybe one, a whole coin should be called a Satoshi and then <laughs> the Satoshi should be called Bitcoin because pretty soon we're not even going to talk about Bitcoin anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's also the unit bias, right? That's, yeah. That's, that's completely crap for me, that the whole unit bias thing. Yeah, exactly. And it would like mitigate a little bit the unit bias. But now that the industry is like so... Um, developed, it's kind of hard to t change those standards. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But um, what I was saying earlier is that I was saying that there is no such thing as a Bitcoiner because the people who are in the Bitcoin ecosystem come from every corner of the world. And mm, like, there is no, like, Bitcoin is for everybody just bitcoin doesn't care it's just money and i say just with care because that being just money is a big deal but um but um bitcoin is just money in the same way that the dollar is just the dollar the dollar doesn't care if you're corrupt if you're a criminal or you're a good person 
is just there for you to use and for you to like get what the the goods and services that you want. So in the same way Bitcoin is the same. So you within the ecosystem you're going to have people with very strong and diverse beliefs. Mm. Um even though like some of the people who are in the ecosystem we like to think of ourselves as bitcoiners because we use bitcoin. Mm, the bitcoin ethos is something I think there's some components that are flexible and then some components that are less flexible and the closer you stick to the actual characteristics of the technology then the then the more really grounded those ethos are so like low time preference is definitely one of those like almost immovable ethos that does that does come with bitcoin but you also have the gamblers on the exchanges trading like crazy people leveraging their lives away so and they are also bitcoiners so it's difficult to define a re- like the characteristics of a true bitcoiner and sometimes it instead of being inclusive it's an exclusive term which marginalizes people out to be to be outsiders of the bitcoin community when the bitcoin community we are the outsiders mm. so it's a it's a delicate it's a delicate concept the thing about being a bitcoiner and what ethos and values you're supposed to follow yeah and that's that's something very true and we talked about that before and i loved it so much because um, when I go on on Twitter and I see like, oh, Bitcoiners has to eat meat. No, there's vegans. Like I, I, I experienced, my, uh, I myself experienced that. Like I tried vegan, I tried only meat. I, I just like try a lot of things because yeah. I want to experience those things and the advantages and disadvantages of that. But that's not a Bitcoiner. Just just, just because you eat meat and you <laughs> think it's a great idea, it's not because of that that. All Bitcoiners should be like that. And I think that's because uh, kind of Bitcoin is like a mirror. And I think Thrachtal Encrypt, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, who make the nice uh, things, they make the nice new piece out where it's just a mirror. And that's what Bitcoin is. Like you uh, project your values onto that. And then you think whole Bitcoin is like that. Yeah, I think the underlying like ethos that is true about Bitcoin is that it it encourages you to search the best of things so because like look in in the united states the meat is terrible so like if if we're talking about mcdonald's meat then meat then eating just meat is not a good idea and and also it depends on your body type for some people eating meat is a great idea for others like me i love my veggies i love my potatoes and i'm still going to be a bitcoiner and i'm going to eat my veggies when i go to the <laughs> to the meetups because I love them. And so I think uh I people get intimidated by like how social media works and so it does become a little bit intense. But I think in terms of your nutrition every person should find what makes you feel the best. But what is true is you want to find the best meat or you want to stick to like the high quality oils or you want to like Uh, it's not necessarily that you should eat just meat it's that you should try to find the best within it that like a s- striving in the same way that the money is hard then the work it should be like hard work but not in the sense that you're going to overexert yourself but in the sense that the work is worth something and so you want your meat to come from a good place and be correctly sourced and you want like your your cold storage to be from a open source like good technology and you want your children like the the family values i think that that's amazing mm-hmm. i think it's amazing that bitcoin because people like like from the outside they see bitcoin like as greed and capitalism but like when you're here it's such a different experience i was um at a at like the women's gathering earlier today and their talk was about mm, like how welcoming bitcoin is to families and how like bitcoin tries to support the idea of having a strong family nucleus because bitcoin wants your children well educated and they want your children to be like sovereign and they want your children to not be part of the educational system that indoctrinates us to be submissive and to be 
compliant and to be um, yeah willing to to participate in this like the structure that our society has this designed for to be good employees mm. <laughs> to be good employees <laughs> and so like Bitcoin is a is a path like who would have thought that Bitcoin would be like encouraging people to to homeschool <laughs> it's so it, it's a weird thing right <laughs> yes <laughs> All of a sudden, all Bitcoin is a homeschoolers. <laughs> yes. In Austria, it's not even possible. It's I, illegal to I, homeschool. I think, I think yeah. in Austria it's illegal. Uh, in some illegal. places, it's, it's just not possible. Yeah, uh, and it's 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 weird. But there's one thing that I feel like there's underlying uh, on all of that. And every Bitcoiner I spoke to till now mm -hmm. likes freedom. Okay. It's like freedom is that uh, technology. Uh, it's freedom is that one common theme that most people agree on. We want more freedom. Yeah. But the thing is, everyone interprets freedom differently. Everyone is like, oh, that's freedom for me. That's freedom for me. Uh, and there was even one guest on, Gary uh, Cardone was, he said, um, Robin, give me the, uh, do me the favor and ask every guest of yours, what is freedom for you? I did not do this till now. Like I rarely ask people that. But uh, with you, I think it's an interesting uh, conversation. So what is, what, how do you define freedom? What is freedom uh, for you personally? Yeah. Well, I'm Colombian, so I have been exposed to what it's like to be living. Because in Colombia, we had a very short dictatorship. So, so the oppression doesn't really come from the dicta dictators. But I would say that Colombians are still oppressed because we are oppressed by corruption and we are oppressed by physical threat, basically. And... Uh, it's a society where the the um, criminals have the advantage and basically you, you're always scared and looking over your shoulder which is, which is strange because at the same time Colombians like for many many decades had like the ranking of the happiest country in the world and that's because in Colombia you can be very free And Colombians, we love to dance and you can go and like hang out in a park and then you're dancing till six in the morning and you're like just hanging out with your friends and you experience like a strong sensation of freedom while being like oppressed by fear and <laughs> danger. <laughs> so for me, freedom is not just like the ability to... I, to like buy stuff or go places. To me, freedom is also the ability to feel well-being, to feel peace, to feel safe. The freedom, special. I think to me, the biggest correlation to freedom or what freedom means to me is to feel safe with who you are, with what you do, to feel safe to like express yourself, to feel safe to engage in the activities you want to engage. Yeah. Does, does Bitcoin make the world... Uh, a more freedom loving uh, world or is it as you said in the beginning just money that basically we because i think about that a lot we when now when we're now in the bitcoin community extremely freedom loving extremely critical thinking really strong opinions i love being on the conference mm -hmm. uh, there are only rare exceptions to that only rare exceptions to that um, but sometimes i think about is that because we are in an early special group early adopters because they think differently or is it because Bitcoin actually changes something in your brain and actually changes something in society because it fixes the incentives to think more long term than, than short term. Do you think that Bitcoin could actually on a society level, on, on like a human mm -hmm. being level, not financial at all, change something? I'm going to take a side route before I get to the answer to your question because the because of this in bitcoin people don't like to talk about fud which stands for fear uncertainty and doubt <laughs> and things that cause fud are like uh the idea that bitcoin doesn't scale that I, like bitcoiners like to think of it being uh in fully inclusive so like that it's available to everybody and to bank the unbanked. And the truth is that Bitcoin can't bank the unbanked because the unbanked are broke, or not all of them. Many are unbanked because of 
because they're engaged in illegal activities. But let's focus on like the, the population that is has a low uh, income or who have no savings or that live on the day to day. Like they are excluded from participating in Bitcoin because of high fees or they're excluded because uh, the Lightning Network is still difficult to use or difficult to understand. It's just for someone in the countryside in Colombia who may, maybe has a phone, it would be like a challenge to understand what you're talking to them about, like paying with a Lightning with a lightning wallet they're not gonna they're like still we're not still at the place where we can bank the unbanked hopefully it i mean it's only been 15 years bitcoin will evolve into being able to actually service these communities because when when bitcoin first originated like they it could have they served the these communities because it was simpler to use uh back then when in the sense that it was just on chain and it was cheaper, so you could like transact for very small amounts for micropayments, which is now not really possible. And also, not all Bitcoin is fungible. The majority of Bitcoin is fungible. But the other day, like a couple of satoshis from the the first satoshis from the first reward from the from after the halving got sold for like twenty million dollars, something ridiculous. So, so I mean. There's a lot of things that Bitcoiners don't like to talk about because they can like detract people from from wanting to be involved in Bitcoin. But the thing is that even though I don't I don't understand why we don't talk about them because we need to have these difficult conversations in order to grow, to educate the audience. Like like mining centralization is a little bit scary, and we should talk about it because that will encourage people to go and like. And figure out self mining instead of hiding it because hiding it doesn't lead to like the solutions. And um, the thing is that even though all these obstacles exist or all these like challenges still uh, are things that Bitcoin is going to have to overcome over time, it's still the best hope that the pop- that us as people have for freedom. Like, even though all these challenges exist, we shouldn't be afraid of them. We shouldn't be uh, afraid of the FUD because despite all of the FUD, even if half of it is true, it's still the best option that we have to become more free. And why is that? Well, because before the the government needed kind of like your consent in order to to engage in like in like making policies and taking actions. But now the governments around the world are are quite autonomous with respect to their people. For one, because they can print money. Also because the way they raise the funds, like because if you, if, if you don't agree with how the government is doing politics, then you could, uh, like not pay taxes because you don't agree with what they're doing. But nowadays, if you do that, you will, your funds will be confiscated and you will go to prison. So what I, the way that I feel that Bitcoin brings the most freedom and empowerment to us, the general population, is because it, it gives us back the power of, ha- of getting the government to get our consent to establish policies for the community. Amazing. I, I was just, I get that asked uh, a lot, uh, especially from outside of uh, Bitcoin people, because what do you do when you are not able to save in Bitcoin? Like uh, in Colombia or in other parts of the world where maybe the best thing you can do is like save 10 euros, 10 dollars equivalents every month. Um, do you think e- every even for the person that has almost no savings or is living from day to day is bitcoin doing something for them i guess it's in colombia also a a big topic i think it it will be i think it's still in a stage where the people in the developed countries are more quick to 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 adopt because they have more access to like the technology and to education but the people who would benefit the most who are in like South America or developing countries 
will adopt it last because uh, it's harder for them to uh, get included in the infrastructure. Like getting hardware wallets in South America is really difficult because they don't have distributors. So it's going to be a much slower process for them to be able to get the benefits of the Bitcoin ecosystem. But the Bitcoin ecosystem growing and and absorbing every day more people will eventually uh, foster an environment that will allow them to also participate in the ecosystem. And I mean, for me, the most important thing is political. Because, and I think, I mean, political and economical, because and I and. In a sense, we know that it was for Satoshi also because of what he engraved in the um, in the um, Genesis block, because he was basically calling out the fact that the way that the fiduciary economy works and how banks can get into these horrible situations and the way you bail them out is by diluting the the time of the middle and lower classes and and that's like for me it, that's very stressful because it, it's like the elites are stealing the time like literally your life force from you by impoverishing you and impoverishing your work so I think right now it's hard to see... I mean, there are places where it is happening, like El Salvador and like in smaller communities around the world where Bitcoin is already like taking a foothold and it's starting to flourish. They are seeing some of the benefits. But I think at a, at a larger scale, it's going to take time for them to be able to experience the empowerment that comes from Bitcoin. Mm, I love it so much and it ties back to, to Bitcoin and what's the actual mission of Bitcoin and sometimes it gets lost, I feel like. Um, I wanted to ask you that before, I forgot it, um, when we talked about that's that's not a Bitcoiner or like what is a Bitcoiner mm -hmm. because is there something or when you have to po point at one thing in the Bitcoin community, what does annoy you the most? What annoys me the most? Well, yesterday... There was no line in the girls' bathroom, which was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> But it also makes me a little sad. It also stresses me out a little bit. But I think it also has to do with, like, being tolerant. Because uh, it, when I said it was kind of overwhelming and kind of threatening, the social, Bitcoin social media is a little bit rough yes. and a little bit harsh. And I don't know if a lot of women are willing to, to tolerate that kind of brutal behavior. <laughs> But like, I I do wish I could see more women or female, like, um, I don't know, like female energy or female power within Bitcoin because uh, we're great educators. And uh, we're very compassionate. We could do good. <laughs> I agree to 100%. I had even a podcast on uh, uh, where we talked about that specific topic, mm -hmm. which was really fascinating. Not the topic, uh, not the, the talk itself, uh, but the reaction was so interesting. Uh, because I put like a really like, we need more women in, a, in, in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And the reaction was like, oh, we, we don't... <laughs> <laughs> like really aggressive even uh -huh. uh, nothing really bad but that was really like an interesting uh, pushback pushback yeah. to, to see I'm like no Bitcoin should be growing organically we don't have to like do this um, which is also uh, interesting for me now do, do you see a way where we could because right now it's undisputed there's so many more guys than girls uh, mm. in the in the community like I have on my YouTube channel 95% uh, male audience mm -hmm. uh, and even uh, the biggest I think uh, Bitcoin YouTuber uh, uh, female Bitcoin YouTuber Natalie Brunel mm -hmm. uh, she has 20% female oh uh, audience like even a woman only has 20% uh, of females listening of course when I'm a guy I, I, even on a split split basis in the community probably have more yeah. guys than girls listening to me but 
is there any way that you can imagine like this being better? Like, you imagine like, oh, how can we, what can the Bitcoin community and content creators as myself and other content creators do to be more welcoming? I don't want to promote only the women, of course, but yeah. I want to be uh, that everyone can listen to my podcast and not be like, that's, that's not from a uh, woman. I was the only woman in every single room that I sat down yesterday, except for one who was a speaker. <laughs> um, the thing is that like I feel uh, torn because I'm a single mom and it wasn't really until I became a single mom that I realized that I disliked some of the values that I had grown up with I don't think men and women are equal I don't think either one is better um, we, we just have differences that should complement each other. I mean, if you're not going to have a family, then it's simpler. But in, in a family, the children are the one who pay if there isn't like a balance in the dynamic. Mm. So for me, I think, um, the role of the woman in the home is undervalued. So it's hard for me to push for women to be like the lead when I kind of agree that someone needs to nurture the children very strongly. So I do wish there were more women in Bitcoin. And like two weeks ago, I was talking to George about making a meme. But normally the memes in Bitcoin are like, The wife is like, why are we buying more Bitcoin? But this meme was the wife, like old school wife, uh, chasing the husband with the broom and saying like, why haven't you put it in cold storage? <laughs> 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 Because like, that's, that's the kind of women that we could also have in Bitcoin. She doesn't have to be at the forefront of like handling the family economy, but she could be like a healthy advisor, which is what women, I mean, I'm not saying that's their only role and then the man has the life. I, I totally believe that women should have a life and a career because that's also what I have done. And I do, and I think the reason you have the right to do that is because it's really fun and really exciting and it's really super rewarding to have like your social, like a social and intellectual development. But like it, it's also super rewarding to being at home with my daughter mm -hmm. and sharing with her and seeing her grow. So I just think that women, um, how could they be, is that, I agree with the men that say that I don't think that the information should be presented in a different way because, in my opinion, the information is out there and it's just a matter of curiosity. But we do live in a society that encourages like that dynamic where the man should be like solely responsible and the leader of the whole situation, where really the, the most successful couples come from people who work together and, and can advise each other and protect each other and like have joint dream so I just think it's a matter of women being curious and and I don't know it, it, I just I wish I knew because I want them to come to <laughs> if you are listening to this podcast you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup and there's two things you have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way let's focus on the first thing how to buy Bitcoin it's simple have a Bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a Bitcoin only exchange I use 21 Bitcoin 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store Bitcoin Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so that's my simple solutions that's a bit box you just put your bitcoin on there back up your seed phrase and you are better than 95 of all bitcoin hodlers if you have more than a thousand euros in bitcoin it's an absolutely must have i hear it um when we talk about male versus female for me it's always like 
um, when I see men, they are more interested in things. Mm -hmm. Like when I talk with my friends, we usually talk about things. We don't talk about other persons. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and women seem to be more interested in uh, other persons. In, I, I don't think it's necessarily other people, but it's definitely like in their emotional world. And so the emotional world does have a lot more to do with humans than it does with things. So, yeah, I mean, I'd say that's a fair... I also think men uh, have a larger capacity to focus on a single thing and women have a larger capacity to think about the big picture. So it's just it, when you can have like that tunnel vision, which Bitcoin requires a little bit because you kind of have to go through this like rabbit hole and like dive and search and research and And then after a couple of days, then you come out and you're like, okay, 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 this is the thing. I want to do this. It, for women, it might be like, what is this? Like, why am I going to do this? My life is good how I am. And like, this is so complicated. Like, what is this gimmick? Uh, I'm not an investor. I try trading. I have to say trading is for, for people with a very special character. And I don't know if a lot of women, if we have that character, I think because you have to be very calm even when you're losing it's very stressful so I'm not saying women can't be good traders I'm just saying I don't know if most of us are designed to do that kind of job and I think we have to uh, when we, whenever we talk about that stuff we always have to say um, we are generalizing because yeah. there are Uh, females that are way more male than uh, some males. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're always outsiders of that, but in co those conversations, uh, it's, it's like general terms. And I wouldn't even see, say women who are way more males. I'd just say like women who have personalities that have like certain traits that men, that come easier to men. Mm, yes. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, and nowadays a lot of men also lack like that alpha energy and that like so it just goes both ways <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, lo I love it a lot where like we, you, you start to talk about bitcoin and you go <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get somewhere yeah. uh, one bitcoin topic i wanted to also uh, talk with you is um as you said before you are in the technical stuff Mm -hmm. And you want to build on on, on Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. Is there something? Uh, first question: Is there something that you would change on a fundamental layer on on, on Bitcoin Core? Uh, and second uh, uh, type of a question is like: What would you? What do we still have to build on on on, on Bitcoin? What what is the things that we need uh, to build on on Bitcoin? Uh, or uh, how satisfied are you with lightning? How satisfied are you with li liquid pediment? With all, all that field, li 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 layer two stuff? Okay. How, how do you see that? I mean, on principle, no. On principle, I wouldn't change anything about Bitcoin Core. Um, well, Bitcoin Core is the implementation, but there are multiple implementations. Um There, there is a bug in Bitcoin. People like to say that there is never going to be any more hard forks, but there is at least one more hard fork that is going to happen for sure because there is a integer overflow and like uh, in a hundred years, if we don't fix the code, it's going to go crazy. Uh, so when that happens, there might be an introduction of other consensus changes. The question is whether whether by the time that that bug gets fixed, there will be consensus on changing anything else, <laughs> which is very unlikely. It's unlikely that Bitcoiners, that the actual consensus rules will ever change because there's the, the, the ecosystem is growing every day and with time it's only going to get bigger and it'll be very hard because... When you do a hard fork, if you change the consensus rules, that causes a hard fork. And what that means is that if everybody doesn't upgrade kind of at the same time, the chain can split. And, and then some people will, it like, just like a, just like a Bitcoin cash, it'll be an, uh, two forks. So that's dangerous the more that the network grows. So we'll see how that develops. I do sometimes wonder, like, in 2140 
when the reward well the like new minted coin coin from the coinbase fi the emission and it finishes and all the supply of bitcoin is in flow whether it would be considered to change the block size or the intervals i mean people don't like to talk about block size but it's not i mean it doesn't need to be demonized it's very simple the reason people don't like to talk about block size is because they want the size of the hardware to grow at the same rate as the technology the the for storing memory because they don't they want it to be inclusive and for people to be able to run a full note because the the like let's let's call it the radical bitcoiners and maximalists are very adamant on the fact that everybody should be able to have a full note so that you can verify your own transactions and not trust any third parties mm -hmm. and all those arguments are totally valid um but the if technology if there is a jump forward in technology and and that's no longer a feasible argument for not to have larger blocks then things could change but it depends on the technology evolving <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> on the technology evolving faster than is mathematically like understood that's an interesting i never heard that actually before uh, when we have uh Bitcoin, the, the argument against the block size increase. Uh, by the way, do we have water? There's a, there's I think there, there is something in there. Okay, so, water is very important when you speak. <laughs> 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 I always uh, have, have it with me. Uh, and when I was coming up, I was like already checking is there enough water. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, for people that just listened, uh, we, 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 we got something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, where was I? Like, this, I never ha heard that actually in the block size debate because I was like, no, we cannot increase the block size because then we need more space to operate a full node. So then it gets more, less inclusive and then we uh, push people outside of Bitcoin. But when the technology is just getting cheaper and cheaper every day, Uh, because we're getting more efficient in developing the storage uh, possibilities on here, maybe at a point where uh, what is now co uh, maybe costing 50 euros, 100 euros to buy a storage device, maybe costs in 100 years 5 euros compared to, of, will be costing in euros way more because the euro will inflate a lot or will not be there anymore. But let's, let's use that as an example. It will be so cheap compared to now that it might be an interesting idea to open up the block size debate and say like, okay, maybe a little bit more. The only thing that I'm afraid of, like, let's let's always increase it a little bit, a little bit, and then in the end, it, it gets to a massive thing where the blocks is, uh, uh, like you open the, the the box of Pandora and, and all of a sudden, you have every five years an increase in block size. Uh, will be interesting to see. You can also shorten the interval of 10 minutes. But then you're also playing with the time spent for relaying the blocks across the network and you would be at higher risk of having orphan blocks and like other stuff happening. Mm. But, uh, but have in mind that every time that you change the block size, you would have to have a hard fork. So I don't think it's feasible for it to ever be a situation where it would change often or uh, even in a, like, even every five years. I, I think If, if it was to be done, it would have to be like, like, it would have to be like chunky because I think you would only get to do it once. <laughs> so I think if that was a choice, well, because like there could be breakthrough in data storage with like, if somebody learns how to store the blockchain on a piece of DNA, then who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> But like for now, it's totally understandable why the people like the Bitcoiners uh, shut that topic down so harshly. I'm curious to understand, like before, why did you think that the block size, because it's such a hush hush subject, why did you, what did you feel was the reason before we spoke today? 
uh, the the blog says well, why it should not be in green. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, it's t- I told a little bit before. It was like when you increase it, then the total storage t- uh, that you need for a full node will increase also. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, when you have a higher cost of operating a full node when you need more storage. And the second reason was like if yeah. you, if if you increase it once, maybe you increase it twice. Uh, and this is like, wh- why why should we uh, increase? Like I'm always like uh, I, I'm a software developer. I was a software developer myself. I'm not a great one. Uh, just that, like when someone asks me a specific question on the Bitcoin code, or I'm like I'm 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 opting out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the most technical person, but I was software developing front end and back end for three years. Uh, and for me, always the thing was. Uh, especially the senior developers were always, always really cautious with change. Yeah. They're like, there might be a small change that might be innocent, but then all of a sudden it changes something completely else that you didn't even notice. So I'm always a little bit on the front, like don't change too much on the main base layer yeah. as with the TCP IP protocol, as with the other protocols. And then we can go on to second layers, third layers, whatever this is, and push something. For, for example, also the debate on uh, UTXOs. At some point, we will have the possibilities that not everybody can afford um, uh, main layer Bitcoin transactions because the transaction will be costing so much. That's why you also have to manage a UTXO in a in a, a good manner so they don't get stuck. That is a dangerous uh, area because recently I interviewed John Carvalho and he made me aware of the fact that the Lightning Network requires for you to be able to settle on chain for you to be able to enforce the correct incentives for good behavior. So the Bitcoin fees on chain can never be so high that it disables the second layer users from settling on chain. Mm. Yeah, what, what what I heard with uh, Wicked, he was saying he, do, he does not see Lightning as an everyday thing. He sees Lightning actually between uh, bigger institutions and between other layers, which, like, this is a topic where I'm, like, really feeling uh, from my knowledge base uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically repeating what other people said mm-hmm. here. Um, but I'm really interested in how scaling bitcoin works and that's why i'm asking it more and more on my podcast if people i think i have have a good opinion that uh, li- like you so how do you how do you see that uh yeah because like basically the bottom line is that bitcoin on chain doesn't scale mm. and so um and people don't like to talk about that too much because it, it causes stress <laughs> <laughs> no 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 my bitcoin is perfect <laughs> yes <laughs> But the but it's fine. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean the end for Bitcoin. You had asked me about Lightning earlier, and I didn't answer you. So we, this is the perfect opportunity to talk, talk about it. Hopefully, I mean, like I said, it's only been like how many years are we into? Twelve years? Twelve years? No, twenty four. No, we're uh, it's been fifteen years, sixteen years now. For, for we're Bitcoin, on the sixteen years. Yes, we are sixteen years. Okay, so we're on the sixteenth year. So I mean, that's nothing. Yes. We, it, 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 so many more new amazing things are going to happen that we haven't even thought about. Maybe lightning is going to be the, the second layer that lasts the test of time, but maybe other thing comes around that we haven't even considered that uh, brings a new way of using Bitcoin and settling on chain that kind of uh, continues to solve this problem for everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um, Lightning is not ideal because it's difficult to use and you have to have channels between people, but it's still peer-to-peer. It's still, uh, I mean, relatively private. Mm. Uh, Like, this is why it's hard to have, like, one Bitcoin community with one ethos because, like, one of the things that I really liked Bitcoin for was the idea that nobody could mine your financial data anymore. But the problem is that it, this is only relatively true, and the more that you trust third parties in Bitcoin, the less true it is. So for me, like I don't want to just have a have a a wallet that is self custodial. For me, that's only like half of the equation. It has to be self custodial and 
it needs to be connected to your own node because you should not be trusting third parties. Mm. So, so, but the, all those demands are quite stringent. <laughs> and, uh, me, and, uh, and, uh, like, uh, like common consumer might not care about these things as much as I do and might be willing to have their sovereign, the, um, their financial da data exposed in exchange for, for ease of use. So it, if we sac when we sacrifice our privacy a little bit, we can get cheaper and ease of use. That's an interesting discussion because now we're pushing for self-custody and everything. And then I'm going to my normie friends. <laughs> and, and then they're like, I have pre to buy... Pre-coiners, pre-coiners. No, no, they have Bitcoin. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, my, my normie friends that have Bitcoin but not are deep in the Bitcoin community, they're like, what, I have to buy some like 100 euros a device again to like do the self-custody Then what happens when I uh, screw up? They're like, I trust them more than I trust myself. Yes. I hear that a lot. But I feel that way a lot as well. To me, I think that the biggest obstacle for, for Bitcoin adoption is self-custody because with the power comes the responsibility. Yes. And the responsibility freaks everybody out. It's like, I do not want to be responsible for my money. And, and I empathize. I empathize because I feel the same way. It is scary. And like you're freaked out that you're going to mismanage your keys and you're going to lose them and you're not going to write them down and you're going to, and then you're going to like send your money to like some scam and like, oh my God, you're going to make a typo in the address. <laughs> and, 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 and you always hear that stories. Yeah. It's, it's not like that. it's never happening. You always hear those stories like, oh, uh, he lost two Bitcoin there, he lost 25 Bitcoin there, he lost 400 Bitcoins there. I'm like, that happens to people. And possibly because, and that's what I mean by privacy, people might be willing to hold their money in a Bitcoin bank that is insured. So like if something happens, like if the bank gets hacked, the insurance will pay you back your money. You know, but but you, that's not Bitcoin. Mm, that's yeah. not Bitcoin. Like, <laughs> if, 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 if your Bitcoin are not there anymore, it's 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 gone. No, what I mean is like not your seeds, not your not your keys, not it. Does, it's not just not your Bitcoin. It's not even Bitcoin. Yeah. Like if it's not your keys, it, that what you're using is not Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> actually it's paper bit it's, it's digital it's, it's a, someone's excel sheet so like when you're on the exchange you're not using bitcoin when you're not self-custing you're not using bitcoin when you because that's just a table on somebody's computer uh so yeah so that the, those things aren't really bitcoin and I think earlier you asked me about if I thought that like why the people who are bitcoiners are interested in freedom so I think part of the answer to your question is what we're talking about right now. Because the, pe the only people who are willing to endure self-custody are the ones who are interested in freedom. <laughs> the other people are just not motivated enough to escape the system. Like, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing but gratitude for the United States. I, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not in a situation where I have to fight my government. Well, the Colombians, I hate them a little bit, but I love I love my <laughs> Colombian people. Um, so, like, but that do doesn't make me blind to the fact that around the world there is many people who are in disagreement with their government and are not able to take action or to take a stand because the government has too many tools to oppress them. So that's. I do, I do all that effort because I never want to see myself in the shoes of the people who I see suffering around us. I love it so much. I love it so much. Uh, it, it's always with the podcast, the, the longer it goes, the better it gets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you also uh, experienced yeah. that. Yeah, at the end, it's like, oh, but now I want to ask four more questions, four more questions. <laughs> Uh, it's like the, the second half hour is always bit, uh, better than the first half hour and, and then, then mm -hmm. it goes on and on yeah, it's, 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 it's really cool um, 
So the one thing uh, that I always ask my guests now, it's kind of a new end routine to my podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, before we come to the actual end routine is, what are you most uh, passionate about besides Bitcoin? Like besides that all Bitcoin stuff that we talked about right now, is there any, anything else that you're really passionate about, deeply learning about? And I always like to also give the reason why I'm asking that is because Bitcoin is an extremely diverse group of people and we can extremely... We, we can learn a lot from each other. Mm -hmm. And I want to give, with that question, the platform so we can learn something else than all the money stuff that we always learn mm -hmm. from each other. I mean, I have to, I mean, as a mom, I have to say that my number one is my daughter. Because, mm -hmm. like, so, like, everything that has to do with being a child and, like, their development, like, how to support her so that... I'm super grateful for the school I went. Like, I, I, I thought my school gave me an amazing education. But it comes with a whole baggage of horrible things. Mm. So what I try to ask myself all the time is how, how can I ever manage to provide my daughter the level of education <laughs> that I received without totally, like, subjecting her to the whole ethos and the whole indoctrination that comes with being in a in a official school yes so that's that's what i kind of like to think about the most is how to that's my passion is to be there for her to learn how to be there for her because you also like i think the parents who get to like when their children are teenagers and then the teenagers are crazy It's not because the teenager didn't change correctly and grow correctly into the right person. It's because the parents were not able to evolve correctly so that by the time that they were te their children were teenagers, they could get a healthy relationship with their children. <laughs> so for me, it's like about a lot about like personal development and it, it makes you such a better person when you have a child because you you have to become more patient and more respectful and more uh, uh, present and you have to do everything you had already done for yourself like t twice as hard because like it's your child so you want them to like do good and be happy <laughs> also so like yeah it's just um that's what I am most passionate about I think I think even more than Bitcoin It's good that it's more than Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin does not have to be the the number one yeah. thing in, in your life. For me right now, it's kind of Bitcoin right now. Uh, I mean, I do a lot of mm -hmm. like uh, how to do the podcast, how to grow it. Like that's like number two thing maybe. Uh, and the, the other thing that I do in my free time when I don't do something productive, I just love spending time with my girlfriend. That's, that's with your that, grandfather? Uh, my girlfriend. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Grandfather well, I also. Mean, that would be super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a sweet story that I never told about my grandfather on, on the podcast. Um, I was living in Altenburg. That is a really small place, a town where I was growing up. Uh, and there, my grandfather uh, was the one that always um, was there for me after school. Mm -hmm. And they had a farm. Okay. And I was the one weird child because I was tall also. Uh, everyone I saw, like, oh, wow, you're so tall. Um, uh, I was also tall when I was like eight, nine years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was actually driving a tractor with eight, nine years old mm -hmm. myself. Like my, my uh, grandpa was next to me and learned me everything. Mm -hmm. But with eight, nine years old, I was driving a tractor. And one day, like my, my dad saw it, like, what are you doing? And I'm doing <laughs> So... Were there animals on the farm or was it a crop yes. farm? Well, What I, animals? Like it was cows, pigs, uh, horses. It mm -hmm. was it was a dream come true for every child. Mm -hmm. uh, I only notice it now uh, mm -hmm. because I see now what amazing environment this was actually for me. How deeply rooted the self-confidence I got from there mm -hmm. is because I got so many animals. I got the, I got the trust from a grandpa with nine years old to operate a massive machinery. <laughs> uh, Um, most most parents are uh, like so uh, protecting of the child that they forget to they also have to make mistakes mm -hmm. they also have to do something uh, on their own and cannot always be protected 
and then there are a lot of insecurities are created. I think as I have no clue from Paraton, but <laughs> as I, I see it. No, and the city is super strange. I mean, and like imagine uh, growing up always in the city and never experiencing. Like I think that that's why uh, like the young generations have such a problem with social media because it's not just social media. It's social media and being in the city all the time, you know, because like if you were if you're in the countryside, you can tell the difference between the real world and social media. <laughs> But when you're in the city, it's like it's consuming you. It's all over you. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. And when you're in the countryside, you're more in contact with nature. You're like going and you're like riding a horse and you're t like touching a flower and you're seeing a sunset. And it's like, okay, this is life. This moment here is life. And then like what's happening on that computer is just like what people are saying. And it's mm. not that that's not life because when it, like sometimes if you get too absorbed in social media, like I don't even know like at the extreme what it feels like, but I think. Yeah, I a lot of the younger generation that are like in school and they just go from the school and then they're on the computer is just really like how can you not become like full of anxiety and stress and like be depressed about what your friends say on social media if that's your real if that's real instead yes. of like the horse, the sunset, the flower, the milk, the chicken. Absolutely, and that's why I like uh, having the focus on. The family and the close friends is really important because that's the real world, not the, the social media, not the, the random stranger out there. And by the way, I'm super thankful that I have that social media thing mm -hmm. because it gives me so many connections, real world connections. There are like so many people running around the Prague and the behind uh, behind us, uh, behind you. And I'm like, uh, I know he, I, I know him. <laughs> I like it. It's such a great experience. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. And I got to know so many people already. I'm just like mm -hmm. a few hours here that I never saw in person, just like you. I never saw you in person, mm -hmm. but we know each other from the podcast. We know each other from Twitter and Telegram. So now I see you in person and that's all the real world. Uh, but You have to set it, set it apart. Like that's not only your world. That's that's some other thing, and we have to have the real world. And mm -hmm. you can use the social media world to expand your real world. Yeah, and there's obviously part of social media is real in the sense that like the support from your like fan base and them being able to access the the resources and the education and the information that you put out there, like. That's like, that's actually like a real, like solid exchange. It's more, yeah, it's more like the clicks and the, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's fascinating topic. It's funny how, where we are. <laughs> and like, what's really interesting is that Bitcoin, like Bitcoin is not what matters. Bitcoin is your vehicle for you to provide for yourself what matters. But it does kind of consume your whole life. Um, thinking because you just kind of get sucked into this rabbit hole. But yeah, Bitcoin is Bitcoin is not even Bitcoin is not num Bitcoin is our number one just because it's obsessive. But really, Bitcoin is not your number one, your number two, your number three. Bitcoin is your number ten. So just so that you can get number one through nine, and like and ho hopefully those things are supporting your family, having like healthy access to good source food access to education that you think like your child can grow up with being a, a, a critical thinker you know yeah amazing uh, I, i love it a lot um now let's come to our actual end routine okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> um where the previous guest is asking a question for oh. the next guest uh, okay and the previous uh guest had the question for you Uh, how do you imagine the future of self-custody, especially, and we talked uh, even a little mm -hmm. bit about that, especially when most people are too lazy to, the, to do the work? We uh, covered it a little bit, but maybe you have uh, something that you want to add to that. Well, it's because, yeah, there's that difference between self-custody and running your own node and trusting thir third parties in a different way which is running yes. your own node um, like this, we are just talking about the self-custody from like you have it on exchange while no you have it on 
uh, some other device, you have it on a Bitbox, you have it on, on some multi-signature uh, setup, you have it on something that where you control the keys. There's no node. There's, then it, that node, I think, it's the next level. But I'm talking self-custody, just like having your own keys. Yeah, but even beyond that, like that's going to be like, mm, I'm not even thinking about the self cost like the technology and the te technical difficulty of it. The part that makes me not 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 know what decision to make is because what concerns me more is the cost. I think that the fees, like you'll still be able to settle on chain, but the fees are going to go up to a point where it's going to outprice people from being on chain. Yeah. Like on chain is going to be a very that's going to be for very few. Even if even if the like yeah. I think that that's a very touchy subject because I don't have a very confident opinion on what's going to happen. I always consult uh, people that I really respect when I don't have that much good of an opinion uh, or that much great of a knowledge on a specific uh, subject in Bitcoin. For me, uh, UTX O management and how many people will be able to actually transact on the base layer. Mm -hmm. For me, number one guy here is Wicked. I also had him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. He makes great analysis on Twitter. Uh, do you do you know him? Mm -mm. Uh, he like he's really a, really a base guy. Like have him on the podcast. Oh, Wicked. Wicked. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. So what what did he say? And he said uh, that. Um, on the base layer, mm -hmm. he thinks that not more than five to ten million institutions, individual persons, whatever the, the thing is, will be able to transact on a monthly basis, basis with each other. Mm -hmm. It's hard to exactly point, point the numbers. It's five million, is it ten million, or fifty million? How many institutions and people will be there? But at some point, the lowest person will be priced out mm -hmm. because it will cost more to transact with it on the base layer than the actual value is that you had to you have to pay thousand satoshis to move, move like 900 for satoshis something like that like just to take a random example yep. uh, so at some point people will be priced out of the base layer and will have to move to other solutions is that thing about it excuse me I'm not sure how this is going to happen but at some but yeah I mean it's just It's hard to think about it without compromising your privacy. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of, like, what the system is going to rely on is some, like, traditional structures. We're going to have, like, new finance with some traditional structures and loss of privacy. Because um, the high, I mean, unless we come up with a better second layer than the one we have, That second layer, like what he was saying, is going to be the like interface between you and main chain and and on chain. Yes, and and they are going to almost run a separate like transaction history, and then settle that every so often on chain. Yes, unless we, I mean, I hope we can find something that works. Yeah. More with the ethos of Bitcoin because the Bitcoin, the big the of the on chain has some ethos that are really beautiful. Mm. That so hopefully we can find something that doesn't step away from that as much as Lightning does because Lightning it's not Lightning that that does that, but it's the fact that if the fees get high, people won't be able to settle on chain. Mm. So so. Hopefully, we find a solution for that situation that allows people to still transact because the actual Bitcoin ethos is is worth fighting for, and I think that's why we're all here, because that underlying technology or the the potential that each one of us sees in it, like super see, makes us want to see it succeed, and we're all just trying to figure out how we're gonna overcome this and make it happen so it does happen because we <laughs> want it to happen so bad. <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, it, it's interesting how, how the Bitcoin uh, community evolves, uh, and it's amazing. And thank you for for being on. We touched so many great subjects, and it's uh, such an amazing 
podcast where we could like make an own podcast about some subjects that we're talking <laughs> about. Uh, so thank you for being on. Uh, for the people listening, for the people watching now, where can they find you? Where can they find your own podcast that you now started? Where right. can people reach out to you? Where can uh, people ask you questions? So we're on Twitter and Instagram and obviously on YouTube. We're going to be putting the podcast out on Fountain as well. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just started, so I still haven't built all the infrastructure, but I do think we're going to do a Geyser fund so that people can support the project. And um, the podcast is called Bitcoineando, which is Bitcoining in Spanish, because I like the idea of uh, learning by doing. So I think, uh, so that's what the podcast is kind of oriented towards. It's kind of like teaching thing, people how to do the stuff so that they will get excited and uh, have the initiative to kind of dive in. And um, yeah, and on Twitter, we're, and on social media, we're Bitcoinando 21. Yo, with the number 21 at the end. Perfect. Yeah. Robin, it's been a real pleasure. I feel honored that you invited me. I'm like... Uh, Super excited to have chatted with you. I thought it was uh, great. And thank you. Thank you for being on. Uh, and for everyone uh, watching and listening, thank you also for watching. Uh, and yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Amazing. <laughs> it, it, I, I loved it so much. Awesome. <laughs>